The Middle Ages, Part 1 1. Definition The Middle Ages, also called the Medieval Period, refers to that period in European history from the fall of the Western Roman Empire to the Reformation. It's from the 5th to the 15th century. The first half of this period is the so-called Dark Ages, when Europe was in turmoil as local rulers fought among themselves to gain control. 2. Feudalism From the second half of the Middle Ages, Europe was run by a system of government known as feudalism. Under feudalism, the land in a country was owned by the king who passed on most of it to his so-called vassals, who were the barons and bishops in the country. This land was called a fief, and in return for it, the vassals agreed to be loyal to the king and to provide soldiers for the king's army when needed. The vassals then passed on most of the land to knights. The land received by these knights or lords was called a manor and included the village and the surrounding land. 3. Medieval Castles When the lord first moved into an area, they built temporary mott and bailey castles. The bailey was the lower part where the houses were built. On an adjoining hill, the mott, the lord's house, was built. A ditch was dug around the whole area for added protection and it was sometimes filled with water, becoming a moat. The inner area would then be surrounded by a timber fence. The height of the mat above the surrounding land made it easier to defend. Once set up and secure in the area, the Lord would build either a manor house or, if he was very powerful and wealthy, a stone castle. Stone castles were surrounded by an outer curtain wall that was very thick at the base as a defence against battering rams. The bailey was inside the wall and housed the chapel, workshops and the guard room to house soldiers. The battlements and turrets added to the defence and the gates had iron grills called portcullis that could be lowered and raised as needed. A drawbridge was lowered to cross the moat that often surrounded the castle and grounds. The Lord and Lady lived in a three or four storey stone building called a keep. Castles could be cold and draughty places as they were made of stone and windows were without glass. Large fires were built in the banquet hall and the living and sleeping quarters and tapestry were hung on the walls to keep in some heat. Lots of clothing was worn in the cold months. The typical castle design had the dungeon below the ground floor, the kitchen on the ground floor, the banqueting hall or main hall on the next floor and above were the private rooms, private chapel and the bedroom. Above that was the battlement on the roof. In later times, tower houses were used when large castles were no longer defensible against gunpowder and when times were more peaceful. 4. Becoming a Knight Knights supposedly lived by a code of chivalry by which they agreed to be loyal to their lord, to fight for him when needed, to respect women, to protect the weak and to keep the Christian faith. Young sons of lords would be sent off to the homes of other lords at the age of seven when they would become pages. They worked serving on table and carrying out jobs for the lord and lady. When they reached fourteen years they became squires who assisted the knights with their horses and weapons and attended the knights at tournaments. Once twenty-one, they were made into knights at a ceremony called dubbing. 5. Law and Order Those accused of crime, such as stealing fruit from the lord's orchards or poaching deer from the forest, or accused of getting drunk or fighting, would be brought by the bailiff to the manor house where the Lord would judge them and sentence them to some punishment. The most common form of punishment was to be put in the stocks, and passers-by could throw things like rotten fruit at them, or spit on them. 
a ducking stool was used to lure nagging or gossiping women into the river. Robbers could have their hands cut off and murderers were executed. Prisons were used only for soldiers captured in war and for hostages, but not as punishment for crime. 6. Religion Bishops were the church leaders in a diocese and appointed the priests to work in the parishes of the towns and villages. As the priest was often the only one who could read and write, especially in the country villages, he looked after any legal documents and provided advice when needed. Christian churches were usually among the few stone buildings in the Castle Bailey, in the town centre, or in the village. The parish priest lived in a house next to the church. Priests said masses for the peasants in the church each Sunday and baptised, married and buried the villagers and townspeople. People paid one-tenth of their crops or wealth to the church in return. This payment was called a tithe. 7. Monasteries In the Middle Ages, holy men called monks went to live in monasteries that were built in remote areas away from the people where they could work and pray in peace and quiet. The chief monk was an abbot who was helped to run the monastery by his second in command, the prior. Monks spent their time working and praying. Some monks worked on the farm to produce food, others worked in the refectory where the meals were eaten, often in silence, and others worked in the infirmary where the sick were looked after. There were monks who worked in the hostelry or guest house where lodgings were provided for travellers and pilgrims. Some monks worked in the scriptorium copying Latin versions of the Gospels and the Old and New Testament into manuscripts so called because they were written by hand. The pens were made from goose quills and the ink from berries and minerals. A favourite area for praying, when not in the church, was in the cloisters, the enclosed garden within the monastery. All monks spent most of their time praying, and the day was divided into three hour periods when monks went to prayer or mass. Prime were the prayers at dawn or sunrise, while vespers were at sunset. Many orders of monks had special vows based on the Benedictine orders, poverty, chastity and obedience. Disagreements and corruption in the church led to a period of great change in the Christian religion called the Reformation that marks the end of that period of European history called the Middle Ages.